Hi there! Today, we'll take a deeper look at Worship Essentials 3, a new release of our flagship Worship Essentials product that has everything you need to play creatively as a modern keyboardist. If you're like me, having the right tools, and in this case, the right sounds, is so important in having a dynamic and engaging experience anywhere you're playing. Let's take a look. Be sure to watch the linked installation video for instructions on downloading, installing, and configuring Worship Essentials for you. With Worship Essentials 3 installed, let's dive in. Worship Essentials is a collection of pre-built patches with sounds covering the spectrum from pianos to electric pianos and pads to synths like leads and basses to pulsing rhythmic accents as well. What I enjoy as a musician is having the ability to start with something simple and layer in more complexity as I play. The Worship Essentials interface consists of four primary areas, global effects across the top, the main sound layers in the middle, patch navigation, and drone tools. In its default configuration, the on-screen controls are pre-mapped to the Korg Nano Control 2, so for the rest of this walkthrough, I'll demonstrate using the Korg Nano Control 2. We have a full installation video for more details on setting that up or setting up an alternate Touch OSC control template for iPad. First, let's look at the navigation area in the lower left. The previous and next buttons will scroll up or down through all the patches. For each selected patch, the middle section controls the volume of each of the six layers. Each layer's volume is assigned to faders one through six on the Korg Nano Control. The Drone Tools volume is assigned to Fader 7, and the Master volume is on Fader 8. Each layer also has three modifiers that can be enabled or disabled. On the primary piano layer, the first button adds one note an octave higher, making it easy to play a lead line that stands out. The second button brightens the sound by boosting the high end, and the third button limits the velocity to keep the notes in the softer end of the velocity range. On other layers, like the synth layers, the buttons control other parameters, like turning the arpeggiator on or off. It's a good idea to experiment with every button so you know what it does and can establish a feel for using it live. Across the top, the piano tone knob controls the brightness of the piano by adjusting a low-pass filter. The piano reverb knob controls the dry-wet reverb mix on the pianos. Moving to the right, compression controls the amount of compression applied to the mix. Increasing the compression is a good way to get a tight sound that fits well in a mix. The delay 1 and 2 knobs control the global delay effects when they are turned on. Delay 1 is a quarter note delay, and delay 2 is a quarter with a dotted eighth note. Buttons 2 and 3 on channel 8 of the nano control turn the delays on or off. The pad reverb and shimmer controls adjust the global amount of reverb and shimmer applied to the pad patches. And finally, the synth tone controls the filter on all pad and synth sounds. Back in the lower left area, the panic button is mapped to the leftmost button on the nano control. The panic button clears out any stuck MIDI notes or glitches that might happen while you're playing. And then we have a tap tempo control mapped to the record button on the nano control for adjusting the tempo real time. Simply tap the button at the tempo you want and main stage will match it. Now if only your drummer could do that too. This is great though because all the delay effects and the arpeggiators synchronize with main stage's tempo, so having the ability to control it live keeps everything in time. If you're stuck in a key that's just too difficult, you can use the transpose knob to change keys without digging through your keyboard's transpose menu. In the lower right, we have Drone Tools, a beautiful ambient pad generator. How many times have you thought to yourself, if only I had an extra set of hands? With Drone Tools, you can trigger a pad to keep sustaining indefinitely while you play something else on top of it. It's the perfect extra hand. If you have a second keyboard controller set up and mapped to the Drone Tools keyboard object, then anything you play there will trigger Drone Tools. But you can also click a trigger on screen. Once you've triggered a Drone Tools pad, it will continue playing until you stop it. To stop playback then, 
Toggle the on-off button on screen or press the corresponding controller button. These first two knobs for octave and interval only apply before you trigger a note. The octave controls the octave in which the pad plays, and the interval controls the thickness of the chord, usually the root or the open fifth. If I pull this all the way down and trigger a C, you'll hear it play just the open fifth. The cutoff knob is a low pass filter that rolls off the high end so you can dial in the tone exactly how you like it. And layer two is an additional shimmer layer that you can bring in or out to help shape the overall texture. You can really hear it if I boost it. While the drone pad is playing, you can enable motion one or motion two by clicking the buttons on screen or pressing the marker buttons on the Korg Nano Control 2. Motion 1 triggers an envelope that gradually expands the sound as it plays, and Motion 2 introduces a slight pulsing. Combine both of them and adjust the cutoff filter for a pad that fits just about under anything. Each patch is saved with the default tempo. Like I mentioned, all effects like delays or the arpeggiator are synced with the global tempo, so you can either save the tempo with the patch or use the tap tempo buttons to change the tempo real time. In fact, let me show you how to duplicate a patch and save a new tempo. Right click on a patch and choose duplicate. Double click to rename it to something meaningful and then with the inspector open, modify the saved tempo value here. Duplicating a patch is a great way for you to save customizations for yourself, but you can also build new patches from scratch. In the patch list on the left hand side, expand the patch designer layer one folder. This folder has a patch for every single sound in the Worship Essentials library pre-assigned to the layer one position. The layer two folder contains the same patches pre-assigned to the layer two position and so on. You can build a custom patch by choosing sounds from each layer and merging them into a new patch. I'll select a piano for layer one, then I'll scroll down to the layer two folder, hold down the command key on the keyboard and then choose a secondary sound. I'm going to keep scrolling down to the layer three folder and I'll choose a third sound. With all three patches selected, you can right click and choose new patch from selected patches, or you can go to the patch action menu and choose the same thing new patch from selected patches. This creates a new patch in the list and merges the selected layers together. Then you can double click to rename your patch and you're ready to go. You can create any custom patch that you want with any sound in each layer, but we realize you may not want all of these patches loaded all of the time. In fact, for performance reasons, it might be better to remove the patches you're not going to use to keep your main stage concert trimmed down and more efficient. I'm going to remove all of these patches for just a moment. In fact, I've deleted everything except our default patch. Even with all of this deleted, you can still use the patch designer to build custom patches. Create a new empty patch in the patch list by clicking on the add a new patch button. In the inspector at the bottom, click on patch library, user patches, WE patch designer, worship essentials three, and then select the folder for the layer you want. I'll choose something for layer one. Let's bring in the worship piano. Create another new patch, but this time choose a different layer folder. Now with your individual patches selected in the patch list, right click or go to the actions menu and choose new patch from selected patches. Here's your new merged patch. Once you've renamed it, then you can delete the individual layers. Using this feature, you can keep the Worship Essentials concert stripped down so it functions better by creating only the custom patches you want. If you've deleted any of the default patches, you can always restore them by creating a new empty patch, then browse to the original installation location under Patch Library, User Patches, Worship Essentials 3, WE3 Patches, Worship Essentials 3, WE3 layered patches, and then choose any one of the original patches that were included with the concert file. Since we're talking about patches, you can also use Worship Essentials 3 patches in Logic Pro. 
Create a new software instrument track and check the option to open the library. Click Create. Then in the library, browse to User Patches, Worship Essentials 3, and choose either Layered or Single Patches. Layered patches will load several instrument channels, each with different sounds, based on the original main stage to concert. Single patches will load them one at a time, so you can choose exactly what you want. That's it. We'd love to hear how you're using Worship Essentials, so find us on social media and share with us how and where you're using Worship Essentials. You can find this product and more and answers to any questions you might have at our website, www.thatworshipsound.com. Have fun.